chapter number 11. Quickly, please. Someone beside you does not have a Bible. Please share yours with them so that we can uh, read this scripture. Extremely important scripture. Very important message this morning. Second Corinthians chapter number 11, verse 1. Would to God you could bear with me a little in my folly, and indeed bear with me, for I am jealous over you with godly jealousy. That means there's a good kind of jealous and a bad kind of jealous. There's a godly jealousy and an ungodly jealousy. For I have espoused you to one husband... That means a spouse means engaged like your spouse. You're going to get married. We are engaged to the Lord Jesus Christ right now. One day the church will be married to him. That I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. Verse 3. But I fear, Paul said, lest by any means as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety, so your minds should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. Now look at this verse, verse 4. For if he that cometh, you looking at it? Look at verse 4. If he that cometh preacheth another Jesus. You see that? Isn't that a strange thing? Another Jesus? How many Jesuses are they? He said, if he come preaching another Jesus, whom we've not preached, or you receive another spirit, which you have not received, or another gospel, which you have not accepted, you might well bear with it. Now, there's three things in that verse, he says, that there's a real and a fake. There's another Jesus. There's another spirit. There's another gospel. And I'm going to just deal with the first one this morning, another Jesus, and talk about it. And uh, I'm going to deal with this morning, we all know Jesus came to this earth, baby in the manger and all this. It's not really a Christmas sermon today. This is a doctrinal sermon on the real Jesus. And uh, since since we're thinking about Jesus coming to this world, I'll deal with that this morning. Uh, There's some strange things going on in this world, in the church world, especially in America and in Australia and other civilized, good, advanced countries. Churches are changing big time. The way they, quote, do church, as they call it, has completely changed. I've been studying this stuff for months and a lot this week. And I've been studying a lot of these smooth, slick preachers, churches today. And this morning, I always have the radio on on Sunday morning. We heard some old-fashioned, somebody's on there preaching and just shouting and praising God from about 20 years ago. And I looked at Kelly and I said, you see the difference in that? I said, that is as different from what we're seeing and hearing now on TV as daylight and dark. It's almost like two different religions. Some of you need to go back to the way people worship God 50 years ago in Baptist churches, every church, and then see where we are today and look at it. We're seeing today another Jesus, another spirit, and another gospel. I'm preaching this morning on this subject. Sorry, Wrong Jesus. Now, when, I, when we talk about Jesus, we talk about him as the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, oh, Dax, oh, there, when he wins them races, they always let him get the microphone for a little bit. And uh, I've, I've never even got to see him race. I think one, when he's a little bitty over here in the Asheville time to do, but I've never even been to one, seen one. And, but I, she sends me them links when he, when he stands up there and says it. And she, I told Carrie, I said, tell him this. She said, he always thanks the Lord, Daddy. And I said, tell him to say, I thank the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. You don't turn up there and just say, I thank God. That can be anything nowadays. Yeah. People say, people in Hollywood say, God, they might, don't, Lord, there's no telling them what they're talking about. It's not the God that me and you believe in and are in the Bible. You know why? You say, I say, don't say Jesus. Don't say, I thank Jesus. Say, the Lord Jesus Christ. The only begotten Son of God that died on the cross for our sin. That Jesus. That Jesus. Lord is his office. Jesus is his name. And Christ is a title. There's only one of them. You cannot confuse him. And if he that cometh preaches another Jesus, 
then you know you got the wrong one. Wrong Jesus. As if life couldn't get more confusing, now we got another Jesus, a weird spirit, and a weird gospel. Now, uh, the Bible said in Second Timothy or First Timothy four one that in the latter times some would depart from the faith. And it didn't say they'd become atheists. It said they'd give heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. And then over in Second Timothy four and verse three, it said the time will come. Do you hear that? The time will come. The time will come, and it's here now that. They they'll they'll uh, uh, that they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust will heap to themselves have teachers having itching ears. He said the time would come in churches where they would not listen to sound doctrine, but they want teachers having itching ears. Tell me, be nice, tickle my ears, preacher. Tell me what I want to hear. Don't tell me anything negative. Everything must be good and solid. And so we're going to think about that this morning and I'm going to introduce the message today with uh, uh, a, little, a little audio here that I've recorded for you just to make my point, okay? Just to make my point. I'm going to use some preachers here this morning. They're very popular in our day. I'm not being critical of these men necessarily. I don't know any one of them personally. I have nothing against them personally. I'm not saying they're not saved. I'm not saying that. I'm saying we're hearing some strange things coming from our pulpits in our day and time. I'm going to quote you one of the leading so-called preachers in America. His name is Rob Bell. Rob Bell, quote, he said this. He said, preaching horrible messages about being left behind and that this place is going to burn is absolutely toxic and are, are against the teachings of Scripture. He said if you preach a sermon saying that Jesus is going to come and people are going to get left behind and the world's going to burn up, that it's toxic and against Scripture. I'm going to tell you this morning, ladies and gentlemen, that is exactly what the Scripture says is going to happen. The Scripture says some will be left behind and that God is going to burn this world up. There's something weird going on. Now, I want you to listen to this. Make sure I'm on this one here, Noah. And um, this is a preacher, and this preacher tells other preachers, never say the Bible says. Never say the Bible says. Never say the Scripture says. Listen to this, and I want you to just get the gist of uh, where we're going in this, in this uh, generation that you and I live in, okay? Uh, just you say, we, we shouldn't say the Bible says, is it? Well... Yeah, no, that's, I'm glad you asked. Don't you listen to his answer. The reason, when I say, it's just a more direct route to say, Jesus taught. The Apostle Paul, who by the way used to... Not the Lord Jesus. When, when you're dealing with secular people, as soon as you say the Bible, everybody now knows all the problems with the Bible. And when I say problems, the problems in terms of the culture's view of the Bible, in terms of six-day creation, no geological evidence for a worldwide flood, there's no evidence for the exodus, there's all, all kinds of things that people... There's tons of ex evidence for a worldwide flood. Poke at, poke at, poke at. And when, we dis, when they in their minds can discredit parts, it discredits the whole. The problem is we send too many co uh, kids off to college thinking the same way. So they get into a freshman you know, um, English class or a literature class and somebody pokes holes in the Old Testament and the whole house of cards comes tumbling down. But the foundation of our faith isn't the Bible. The foundation of our faith is an event, the resurrection. And I think in our preaching, it is easy when you develop the habit to take every single sermon, every single sermon, and weave it back ultimately to Jesus and ultimately to the resurrection because once you settle the issue of who is Jesus based on the resurrection everything unfolds from there now he said this he said don't get up there and say the Bible says the Bible says because cultural culture has poked holes in the Old Testament and as soon as you say the Bible said they're going to turn you off he said make everything about the resurrection of Christ and don't say the Bible says say Jesus taught Jesus taught Paul taught, he didn't say the Lord Jesus Christ. Make sure we know which one we're talking about. This preacher says 
you're going, he's, sneak up on them. That's, that's what's been, sneak up on them. Don't say we get up there and, don't get up there and say the Bible, the Bible, the Bible. People don't want to hear that. People don't, uh, there's only, a, the, the one big problem with that is, if you say Jesus rose from the dead, Jesus rose from the dead, how do we know Jesus rose from the dead? Right. Bible. The Bible. That's the only way we can know he rose from the dead. That's the only way we know he was even here on earth, is the Bible. They say, don't say the Bible said. Don't, and, and I'm going to give you some catch phrases. You know you're dealing with a postmodern preacher who don't believe the Bible but wants everybody to think it. He believes parts of it. That was Andy Stanley, you just listen to, the son of Charles Stanley. Nothing personal against the man. He's done some good messages a long time ago. I, I'm not knocking him as a person. I'm just saying that's the approach nowadays. The approach nowadays is... Uh, sneak up on them. Don't, don't just say that the Bible, the Bible, the Bible, that old hell, fire, and damnation stuff. Uh, let's, let's move on here. Just say it. Let me give you some catchphrases. Here's the way you know you're dealing with a preacher that's been hanging out with the wrong kind of people, reading the wrong kind of books, and the wrong spirit. They use constantly these words. Be a follower of Jesus. Not get saved. Not get right with God. Not become a new creature. Not born again, become a follower of Jesus. Connect, that's a giveaway. Jesus, that word is a giveaway. Your journey, in your journey, that's a giveaway. Navigate, their favorite word besides connect is navigate. I've been studying how to navigate through, okay, we know, you're, you're educated. All right, the other word is, uh, besides, is season. I mean this season and these seasons that we go through. Embrace, have you heard them talk about that? It's not a Bible terminology. Embrace your foot. Uh, and, and, and here's the big giveaway is this. The big giveaway is we don't believe it because the Bible says it. That's their big giveaway. We don't believe it because the Bible says it. Why do we believe it? Let me tell you what they said in the Bible. Jesus said it is written. It is written. It is written. It is written. Jesus said, search the scriptures, for they are they which testify of me. All scriptures give them the inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Uh, uh, the, the, he said, uh, they've known, he told Timothy, you've known this from a child the scriptures which are able to make thee wise unto salvation. You know how the Old Testament, you know how the people knew that he was the Messiah? They knew the scripture. They knew the scripture. You better believe we'll say the Bible says. Amen. That's the whole foundation of who we are and what we believe as Bible-believing Christians. Now I'll give you some more of that right quick. Beginning of the Bible all the way to an end. But the the just... right. Listen to this one. Give you another one here. Let's see, because the implication is... This is Mark Bashir, an interviewer, a journalist, interviewing Rob Bell. Rob Bell is... Uh, a preacher, supposedly, and he's going to ask him, is he a universalist? Because he implies that he's a universalist believe everybody's going to get saved eventually. As you put it, God's love will eventually melt hearts. That's what you say in the book. So are you a universalist who believes that everyone can go to heaven regardless of how they respond to Christ on earth? Um, in, in regards to the question, are you a universalist, I would say first and foremost, no. And that is a perspective within the Christian stream. There has been... That is a perspective within the Christian stream. What kind of talk is that? What kind of talk is it? That is a perspective within the Christian stream. In the Christian tradition, a number of people who have said, given enough time, God will win everybody over. Um, one of the things in the book I'm very clear on and, and want people to see is that this tradition has all of these different opinions. Everybody will be won over. Some will continue to resist God's love. And that Christians have disagreed about this speculation. I, I, I get that. And so, what do you know? I'm trying to give him, get him a straight answer, and he won't. Or that you can... Say yes to this moment. Uh, let me give you that again. Here. Let me give you this again here. Um, Oprah Winfrey. Because the implication is, as you put it, God's love will eventually melt hearts. That's what do you know for sure? You hear that? That is Oprah. Oprah had this preacher. He had the chance to witness to millions of people. And she said, what do you know for sure? 
If there's anything you know for sure, what is it? Here it is, his answer. That you can say yes to this moment and experience a joy that can't be put into words. That is actually possible. All right, you got the whole United States looking. Oprah Winfrey says, what do you know for sure? And you say, that you can say yes to this moment. Ask the Apostle Paul what he knew for sure. He'd say, I know in whom I have believed. And I'm persuaded that he's able to keep that. Which I asked John what he believed. We know that we pass from death unto life. Because we love the brethren. You listen? It's wrong Jesus, y'all. The world needs. Finish that. The world needs. She said, the world needs. I'm going to let you tell us what the world needs. Finish this sentence. Answer. The world needs all of us to wake up. The world needs all of us to wake up. Is that what the world needs? The world needs Jesus, y'all. The Lord Jesus. Listen. I believe Listen. That we're going to be fine. We're going to be fine. That's universalism. Go to, go to a foreign country with a man dying with AIDS and tell him we're all going to be fine. We ain't all going to be fine, y'all. Listen, heaven. I really do. Heaven. Heaven is. Heaven is. Here and now and then and there and. Here and now, then and there is heaven. At hand and among us and upon us and available and real. Have you been smoking bad dope? What is heaven? Here and then and now and there and upon us and real. What kind of answer is that? Listen, you know what that is? That smooth, slick, crooked, that way you make the Christians think you believe like them and you make the uh, secular world make you think you believe like them. That is a perfect politician's answer. We're in trouble in this country this morning. And I'm going to give you that. All right, I'm about ready to preach here in just a second. Look at that. You know what this is? Jesus is my own boy. Wrong Jesus. That's the wrong Jesus. Some of your musical habits are so dirty, you actually enjoy that. Now, I now proceed to exhibit two in this message. I'm going to give you three things about Jesus Christ, the Lord Jesus Christ, since everybody's talking about Jesus coming into the world, that is teaching the wrong Jesus. And I'm going to give you a couple of quotes here, and then I'm just going to give you these three things, and uh, we'll be gone. Now, Brian McLaren is also a very well-known author, one of the greatest known authors. Christianity Today, I think, one of the magazines, give him an award as being one of the most e influential evangelicals. We are not termed evangelical. Somebody said, uh, are you an evangelical? And your answer is no. We are Bible-believing Christians. Make sure you get that distinction. Bible-believing Christians. That, that last point there heated it up in here a little bit. And it's going to get a little hotter here in just a minute. We are not evangelicals. We are Bible-believing Christians. We are not independent fundamental Baptists. We are independent Bible-believing Baptists. A lot of false groups believe the fundamentals. So Brian McLaren says this, quote, are you listening? Abraham, Moses, Jesus, and Muhammad had an encounter with God and that changed the world. How appropriate it is that the three Abrahamic religions began their journey with a journey into the unknown. He's putting Muhammad, Moses, Jesus, and Abraham all on the same level. Sorry, wrong Jesus. He, uh, Jesus and Muhammad are not on the same level. Now what these fellows are trying to do is make Christianity and Islam sort of merge together and they call it Chrislam. And that's the front so we can stop the terrorists won't be mad and hit us no more. Tony Campello, 
one of the most popular preachers in America, said, quote, quote, a theology of mysticism provides some hope for common ground between Christianity and Islam. Both have examples of ecstatic union with God, have much in common. Could they have encountered the same God we do in our Christian mysticism? There's a leading preacher in America saying, you reckon that the, that the, that the Muslims encounter the same God we do? Now, I want to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, the Koran does not believe and teach that Jesus on the deity of Christ and Christianity, hear me well, Christianity and Islam cannot coexist. They are not equal. They are not both teaching the same thing. They are not both saying two different roads to the same God. One is teaching that Jesus Christ is God's Son, in, God in flesh, rose from the dead, sitting at the right hand of God, coming again, and the other does not even teach He was deity. Now you're going to have to face this. And your kids are going to have to face it. you got kids in here this morning. You listen to me. They're going to grow up. They're going to high school. They're going to college. And they're going to be hit with this. Three things right quick. And I'm just going to scratch the surface of this. We'll get into a lot more of it later. Number one, they believe this. Jesus didn't judge anybody. Isn't that the truth? Everybody in the world knows that verse. They have no idea where it's at, couldn't find it for life depended on it. And they don't know what it means if they could find it. But they said, judge not, don't judge, don't judge, don't judge, don't judge. As a matter of fact, that's one of the favorite sayings of our generation. Don't judge. You can't open your mouth without somebody hollering, don't judge, don't judge. Now, it's all right for them to judge you. They can call you everything in the world and judge Christian, but you're not allowed to say anything. Now, let me say that is a misunderstood doctrine. Jesus said in John chapter 8 and verse 15, Ye judge after the flesh, I judge no man. That is true, what the Lord said. Read the context. Ye judge after the flesh. So there is a judging after the flesh, and there is a spiritual judgment. You want me to tell you what sec- or, or, uh, uh, 1 Corinthians 2.15 said? It said, uh, He that is spiritual judgeth all things. So there is a sin. Now the truth is everybody in here judges. Everybody in here judges. But you're not supposed to judge fleshly judgment. Jesus Christ said this. He said all judgment is committed unto the Son, unto Him. He, he, you will be judged by Him. Now let me, let me just bring the Lord Jesus, if He were here, bring Him in here and let you listen to Him preach. Let's listen to Jesus preach just for a minute. I'm going to quote Him. And you take any preacher and go anywhere in this town, not to mention up north or out west, and go into church and say this and watch what happens. This shows you how far we've got away from the real Jesus. Let me tell you what the real Jesus said. I'm going to quote Matthew 23, 3. He said, there's a bunch of Pharisees standing over there, and here's his disciples. You know what he said? He said, don't do like the Pharisees, for they say and do not can't believe he judged them like that. Matthew 23, 4. Them people over there, they bind men with heavy burdens and won't even touch them with one of their fingers. Verse 5. They do all their works to be seen of men. Pretty judgmental. Verse 13. You people shut up the kingdom of God against yourself and you won't let nobody else get in. Verse 14. You make pretense. Your prayers ain't even real. For a pretense, you make long prayers. Go into a big synagogue somewhere, a big church service somewhere and say, you people are faking. Your prayers ain't even real. You're Hail Marys and Amens and Amen and Amen, 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 Amen. Go in there and say, that's fake. And watch them holler. You have no right to judge us. I'm just quoting my Savior. Verse 15. You know what he said? He said, verse 14, you're going to receive greater damnation than some of these other people. You know what he said in verse 15? He said, you people can pass sea and land to make one one proselyte, and when you do, you make him twofold more a child of hell than you are. I like that for the sweet, lovely baby Jesus in the manger. How about verse 16? You blind gods. How about verse 17? You fools and blind gods call them fools and blind. You say, well, that makes me nervous. Which Jesus do you worship? 
if you worship the right Jesus, that don't bother you a bit. You know what we say to the real Jesus? Amen, Jesus. Whatever you say, we agree with. Some of y'all got the wrong Jesus, I'm afraid. Verse 25. You hypocrites, you clean the outside, but the inside is full of extortion and excess. Verse 28. You outwardly appear righteous to men, but you're full of hypocrisy and iniquity. Listen to this one. You serpents. Here's the Lord Jesus Christ who people say, He don't judge nobody. That's what they say on the talk shows. Jesus don't judge nobody. Here's what he said. You bunch of snakes. You generation of vipers. How are you going to escape the damnation of hell? Somebody got the wrong Jesus, y'all. Number two. Number two. Here's the second thing you're going to hear about him. You're going to hear, number one, Jesus don't judge nobody, which is wrong. He said all judgment is committed under the Son, and you judge spiritual right judgment. Number two, you hear this. Jesus hang out with sinners. How many of you heard that? Those preachers get on there and they say that all the time. Say, well, it's cool. You know, this, this fellow down here in, in Charlotte, on Furtick, down there and all that, he's got a sermon called The Sneaky Jesus. And the sneaky Jesus sneaks up on you. Bunch of fools, stuff like that right there. They go, I'm going to play it for you one day where he leads and got a guitar and they go, boom, boom, pop, boom, boom, pop. I love rock and roll. Boom, boom. Yes, sir. In the church service. Sneaky Jesus done snuck out the back door there. It's your homeboy. Jesus is not your cool friend. This started about back in the 70s, and I remember when I'm growing up, my sister over yonder, she remembers these old songs. And I remember these songs, and I didn't even think about them until after I got saved. And after I got saved, I thought, what's them crooks trying to say? And there used to be an old song, I think it was country, I'm not sure, and it said this. All you old people remember this. Somebody I got on a guitar and he said, Me and Jesus, we got our own thing going. Me and Jesus, we got it all worked out. How many of you ever heard that song? Raise your hand. Me and Jesus. We got our own thing going. We don't need nobody telling us what it's all about. You know what that song says? Don't preach to us. Don't tell us we're sinning. I don't need nobody preaching. Me and Jesus, we got our own little deal worked out. Me and him's cool. I tell you this, you got the wrong Jesus. The real Jesus don't work out special deals. I'll prove it to you. I'll prove it to you. There was another song about that time said this. You'll remember this, old people. It said this. It said, um, the Lord knows I'm sinning and running around and he don't need your loud mouth informing the town. The Lord knows I'm sinning and sinning ain't right but me and the good Lord going to have us a talk later tonight. Have you ever heard that song? Really? Yeah. Man, are you people there? Huh? That's one of your favorites, isn't it, Jerry? <laughs> I mean, listen, people. That's where this philosophy comes from. Of, well, I know, I mean, I'm shacking up and I'm gay and I'm this, but me and the Lord's got it all. I'm sorry, buddy. You got the wrong Jesus. I'm telling you, and, and this stuff about Jesus is hanging out with sin. He hangs out with sin. He hangs out. To hang out, if I understand that hippie terminology correctly, means, I don't say that, about everybody does. Come on, let's hang out. I don't say that. Uh, but uh, it means we're going to agree together, do something together that we both agree on, and fellowship, it means uh, in two walk together except they'd be agreed. That means they are saying that Jesus would be their homeboy and, quote, hang out with sinners. Now, here's how they justify that. They say, well, see, didn't he hang out there? He left the disciples and went over and hung out with the woman at the well. I don't really think you can call John 4 where he uh, talked to the woman at the well. I don't think you can characterize that as hanging out. He goes over there and this woman comes to the, to the well and he says, give me the drink. She, she was known. She had a reputation. She'd been married five times and was shacking up with somebody right then. He wasn't over there saying, hey, you're looking pretty good today, mama. <laughs> she looked at him and said, 
Sir, I have nothing to draw with. And the well is drink. Uh, the well is deep. How am I going to get you water to drink? And he began to talk. And he, she said, uh, how am I going to do this? And he looked at her and said, go call your husband. That ended the hanging out. He went in there and said, uh, you better get your husband in here. He didn't say, you and him separated? I got one said to me at the mall one day, some old wicked wild woman selling jewelry, and I was looking at her. I come up to her and she said, your eyes match your shirt. Are you married? I said, yeah. She said, happily. See, she didn't say that to Jesus. You say, what would you say? Smacked her. No, I didn't. I said, yes, ma'am, and I witnessed to her. And then she, she, I was sitting there like this, and she said, what do you want me to say? And, the, and Jesus said, go, you better go call your husband. She said, uh, I'm not married. He said, well, you said that right. At least you got your doctrine straight. You've been married five times, the one you're living with now. It's, now, you want to call that hanging out? He wasn't trying to date her. He wasn't trying to pretend, agree with her. He, he said, go call your Nicodemus, the, the ruler of the Jews. Jesus went to him. He came to him. He said, uh, uh, Master, we know you're a teacher that comes from God. You want to hang out? Let's have a beer together. I uh, well, no telling what he said. And Jesus said, you must be born again. Now, you can go to all the parties you want to this Christmas if you'll point your finger and say, all you people need to be born again and get your heart right with God. That ain't hanging out. That ain't hanging out. Jesus didn't hang out with sinners. He witnessed the sinners. He, listen, when we go to a, somewhere and give out tracts of people coming out of a club, we ain't hanging out. Are you listening to me this morning? That's another Jesus. They've invented a Jesus that's cool with sitting on a bar stool, listening to people tell jokes and drinking alcohol and cursing. You say, well, I heard one of them say, he said, man, he went to a party and turned the water into wine. They just had a good old time. You're wrong. He went to a wedding, a Jewish wedding. There was no rock music dancing and he made that water wine it was brand new and new wine in the Bible is grape juice Isaiah 65 and verse 8 said you squeeze the grapes and the juice comes out it's called new wine not fermented wrong Jesus imagine imagine Noah all right, let's go, y'all. Let's go. All you animals, get in this ark. Let's go. Let's go. Animal, animals, get in the ark. It's going to rain. It's going to rain. It's going to rain. Noah, get your son. See him, Ham's elephant. Go tell them animals, get in here. And he walks up to this elephant and says, you better get in here. It's going to rain. And the elephant says, I ain't getting in there. I'm all right. Me and Jesus got our own thing going. <laughs> he looks at him and said, Daddy, the elephant ain't coming in. He said him and Jesus got his own thing going. Noah stands up and says, No, he ain't. No, he ain't. You get in this boat, or you're going to drown. Oh, how judgmental. Oh, how, how could you possibly talk to people like that? You're talking down to people. You're talking down. Well, he said, I'm sorry, I didn't invent this stuff. God said it's going to rain. Get in the boat. You and Jesus ain't got it all worked out. I'm going to tell all you people here this morning and the thousands of other people that's going to hear this on the internet and wherever it goes. I'm going to tell you, you want to work it out with Jesus, you come before him as a sinner, receive what he did for you on the cross, a payment for your sin, have your guilt, confess your sin to God, repent, turn to Jesus Christ, and he'll let you will know the real Jesus. The real Jesus would not go to a honky-tonk and sit around at Hooters on Friday night Amen. and laugh and cut up with people to show them he loves them. And I'm going to tell you something right now, people. You're saved by believing on Jesus only, trusting Jesus only. But I'm telling you, he gets a hold of your heart just right. You're going to have a change of mind about some things. Amen. That don't save you, but he'll, he'll touch you and save you by trusting him. Listen to me. To... To, uh, Im to imply, to imply that Jesus Christ, to imply, to insinuate, to allow people to think that Jesus Christ is cool with people smoking pot 
and drinking and partying is blasphemy. Blasphemy. If the world loves your Jesus, you got the wrong Jesus. Amen. He was not a rebel. He was not a revolutionary. He wasn't the first hippie. One woman said, oh, he was gay. Jesus was gay. And they said, how do you know that? She said, we had 12 boyfriends. I hate to tell you, buddy, that's the wrong Jesus. Right. Jesus Christ is far removed from that as the east is from the west. Right. You know, let me tell you what the Bible says about the real Jesus. He's holy, harmless, uh, spotless. He's undefiled. He's holy. Listen, when I met the real Jesus at 18 years of age and I began to read about him, it made me think everything I'd done was wrong. Every place I went was wrong. The world seemed dirty. I thought he's so holy. He's so holy. I mean, there's nothing the world can compare with him. You meet the real Jesus, buddy, he'll give you, he'll live like Isaiah. Woe is me. I'm undone, buddy. I'm a sinful man. Thirdly, thirdly, some of you done had about all you can stomach. All I can tell you is tough it out. Good, got to grow up sometime. Might as well do it today. Number three, here's the third thing they believe. Number one, they say Jesus didn't judge anybody, which is heresy. Number two, Jesus hung out with sinners, which is heresy, false doctrine. Number three, Jesus came to bring peace. But Jesus is peace loving. He came to bring peace. So let's all, don't never have a war. Don't never disagree with nobody. Don't never, because we're going to have the peace. Well, you got that wrong too. You got that wrong too. Turn your Bible to Matthew chapter 10. I'm going to show you this instead of quote it right quickly. Mark, Matthew 16, 28. Uh, the Lord talked about his kingdom. Mark 4 and verse 11. The Lord talked about his kingdom. While you're turning, they try to um, uh, uh, spiritualize it and say the Lord came to bring the kingdom and we are in the kingdom right now watching his kingdom spread. Look at Matthew chapter number 10. Look at Matthew chapter number 10, please. And um, look at verse 34, please. I'm quoting Jesus Christ, the real Jesus. And here's what he said. Think not that I am come to send peace on the earth, on earth. I am not, came not to send peace, but a sword. I am come to set a man at variance against his father, that ain't the Jesus we're hearing nowadays, y'all. Splitting up families and the daughter against her mother and the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law and a man's foes will be they of his own household. Listen to what the real Jesus said. He that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. He that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And if you don't take up your cross and follow me, you're not worthy of me. That's the real Jesus. Now, what's this thing about peace business? Didn't the angel say, preacher, brother Danny, didn't you read where the angel said, oh, glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace, goodwill to men, it's Christmas. Isn't that why he come, to bring peace? Well, you don't understand, you're getting the first coming and the second coming confused. Now, the angel did say, listen to me carefully, the angel did say, glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace, uh, goodwill toward men, if you got the right Bible. The NIV don't say it. The new versions say it. Don't say it. You know what the new modern versions of the Bible say? They say, the angel said, peace on earth toward men of goodwill. That means it's a spiritual peace that gradually spreads through hearts as the church grows around the world. And right now, the, that, the song we sang a while ago, I hate to say it, them, them some good old Christmas song, but doctrinally, they are just about as messed up as you can get. That third verse of George of the World, it said, He rules the world with truth and grace. That ain't true, y'all. He ain't ruling the world. The world is laying in the devil's lap. The devil's having a heyday. Now, the day's going to come when he will rule the world. Literally, here's what they don't understand. The angel said, the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. You know where David's throne is? It's on earth. It's in Jerusalem. Thank God they're putting Jerusalem back as the capital of Israel. Thank God. That's a big step in the right direction. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah, it's supposed to be there. God gave them that land, the children of Abraham, not through Ishmael and the Muslims, but through Isaac, Jacob children of Israel. So the Lord said, I'm going to give him, Jesus, the throne of his father David. That's in Jerusalem. Did that happen when he was here the first time? 
It sure didn't. You say, well, spiritually, no, 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 no. He didn't get no throne. He ain't got no throne of David now. The throne of David's on earth. When the millennium comes, the Lord will sit down on David's throne and thank God there will be peace on earth, goodwill toward men. But here's what they don't get. They say, well, he comes to make his blessings flow far as the curse is found. Uh-uh. Not yet. Not yet. The curse is still on us. It's still cursed. It's still cursed. You know what the part they miss on that verse is? You say, well, when will peace on earth, goodwill to men be, preacher? They always, you see it, don't you see it everywhere you go? And they're, they're against that now. Peace on earth, peace on earth, goodwill to men. Peace on earth toward men of goodwill. You see that everywhere you go. Funny, they leave out that first part of that verse. Glory to God in the highest. And there ain't going to be no peace on this earth until there's glory to God in the highest. You get that? Can you understand it? That's doctrine. That's sound doctrine. There will be no peace on this earth. You, you say, well, what about his kingdom now? You've got to understand the kingdom of heaven is a literal, visible, physical kingdom that you walk in, you touch, you see. The kingdom of God is within you. The kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy. You say, well, how come it uses them interchangeably? It does in the gospel because the king was here and they were used interchangeably. When the king left, there ain't no kingdom of heaven on this earth right now. They're in the kingdom of God. You can't have a kingdom on, with a king not here. You want me to give you the scripture? You got time for this? If you have to leave, go ahead. You ain't gonna hurt my feelings. I'm really nice. I can forgive you. Jesus throne. He said this. John 18, 36. He said, my kingdom is not of this world. My kingdom is not of this world. He said, if it was, my servants would fight. He said, you talk about the kingdom, the kingdom. He said, my kingdom ain't even of this world. He said, if it was, we'd take over. You say, well, it's spiritual then. No, he said, but now my kingdom is not from thence. One day it will. And Handel's words will come true and he shall reign forever and ever. Matthew, 20, uh, Matthew 10 and verse 34 said, think not. Let me tell you what's going to happen when the king's here. The dead sea will come alive. The earth will get born again. Now the earth, it's like us. Now when I was, when I was little, growing up, the Lord had bought and paid for my sins. Now it didn't do me no good until I got saved. I got born again. I'm born again right now waiting on my new body, which I'll get when the Lord comes back. Now the earth, same thing. When Jesus died on the cross, he didn't just buy us. He bought all the creation. He bought the earth and everything. So the earth is bought. At the millennium, the earth gets born again. Same earth gets born again. Thousand years, and then at the end of the millennium, the earth gets its new body. The new earth is made out of the old earth. You say, well, where's the new earth coming from, preacher? He's going he's gonna, to, as a vesture, they'll fold them up and they shall be changed. He's making the new earth out of the old earth. He's making our new body out of our old body. Our bodies will be changed that it might be fashioned like unto his glorious body. Now, what I've just given you in the last minute and a half is sound doctrine, and some of you need to grab that and get it down in you so you'll know where you're at in this world. The kingdom, kingdom of heaven is real. It's literal. It's visible. That's what Isaiah 2 means. They put this on the UN building up there in New York. It said they'll beat their plow, they'll beat their uh, swords into plow shares. You know that verse? And them nuts really think that we're going to finally get to a place where there's peace on earth and they won't use swords no more. They'll beat them and plow their garden with them. Well, let me tell you how it's going to go. As long as the king ain't here, they're going to beat their plow showers into swords and kill each other. And then when the king comes, he's going to fix it. He did not come to bring peace the first time. He said, it is written, search the scriptures daily. Don't ignore it. Don't, you, don't, if, if a man says, we don't believe it because the Bible says it, don't just say the Bible says it. They search the scriptures daily to see if those things were true. He comes to make his blessings flow. That's true, but it ain't going to happen literally until he comes again. 
Luke chapter 1, verse 32 and 33, a man said, it's figurative. That's not really a real kingdom. Well, it was it really a real virgin in the same verse before it? That wasn't figurative. That was real. Oh, by the way, they're attacking the virgin birth too now. So you've got to watch out for that. I heard a preacher, one of them I mentioned a minute ago, saying the big deal is not really how he got here. Hear that subtle attack on the virgin birth? It's not really a big deal if you believe in the virgin birth. It's that he died on the cross. That's and the resurrection, the resurrection. That's what that Stanley guy's constantly saying. It's not that big of a deal how he got here. I'm going to tell you something and I'm through. I'm delivering my soul. If Jesus Christ wasn't born of a virgin, he couldn't save your dog. He's a sinner like me and you. He was a sinner if he didn't have a... Or if God wasn't his father. He had an earthly father. He was a sinner. The virgin birth, our whole faith hinges on the virgin birth. I don't see why it's such a big deal. You say, well, how could God make a, a baby without a man? And He made Adam and Eve without a mama or a daddy. So what? Nothing too hard for the Lord. Don't accept. Another Jesus. Make sure you've got your faith in the real Jesus. Amen. For there are many false prophets out in this world. Amen? Amen? Let's stand by our head for prayer. Now I know I just done teaching this morning, but our heads are bowed and eyes are closed. Maybe you're here this morning and God spoke to your heart. You say, preacher, I never realized all that stuff that you talked about this morning. It's because we're living in a world. We're living in a world. They don't care if you believe in Jesus as long as it's not the real Jesus. The real Jesus is coming back in flame and fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God. That's what he said. The real Jesus. I hope you'll put your faith and trust in the real Jesus. We're going to pray and let you go this morning. If you're here this morning, you say, Preacher, I need to get my heart right with the real Jesus. You come, come just get down on your knees right here. Right down, get down on your knees right here and say, Lord, I want to live for you. Maybe you're, everything's going wrong in your life. The devil's done threw you a curve, messed you up. Why don't you get it right with the real Jesus? Get it right with the Lord this morning. That's the only way it's going to work. Get it right with the Lord. Get it right with the Lord. If you're here this morning, you've never been saved. Come to the real Jesus. Come to the real Jesus. He'll help you today. Amen. 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 Let's come and pray this morning. We're going to pray and let you go. Come to the real Jesus. Others, others need to come. Others need to come. You say, preacher, I want to get my life right with the real Jesus. Come on right now. Come on right now. The Bible said if man come and preach another Jesus, I'll just ignore him. You might well bear with him. I'll just tell him to jump in the lake. Amen. Others are coming. Others are coming to pray this morning. Get right with the real Jesus, friend. That's who you're going to stand in front of one day. He'll judge you. He'll judge you at the last day. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. Thank you, Lord, for the Scripture. Lord, I'm glad that we've got the Bible to tell us what's right. We don't have to see which way the winds of society go and then go with it. Lord, we're to stay the same. We're to stay constant. We're to stay in truth and in touch with the real Jesus. God bless Shining Light Baptist Church. I'm glad and thankful that it stands as a beacon as a lost world in darkness shining forth the word of life. I pray, God, that you'd protect our church, protect us, protect our families, our homes, our kids, our grandkids. Lord, Lord, let these kids grow up knowing who the real Jesus is and knowing you and have their faith strong that they won't get shook when they go out into this wicked world. We'll thank you and praise you for what you do. In Jesus' name we pray. These are still praying this morning. Wait just a few seconds while they're still praying. I need a couple of you men to help me here just a minute. I can get through. Move some stuff here. The play practice will be at 4.30, and the play will be at 6 tonight. All right? Everybody happy? Say amen. 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 Now, what I've given you this morning is truth, and truth will what? Make you free. The truth will make you free. It's a blessing. All right? Uh, you say, what is truth? Thy word is truth. Let's um, you know, get ready to go. You know, if, if the Bible's not reliable, y'all, what is? 